Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and today we have the fifth video in our series of cube updates where we're going to be taking a look at the green cards. Now, like I said in the previous videos, there's been over 300 changes to my cube and to be perfectly honest, it's playing so, so much better than the embarrassment that was my first initial cube. Now, this is the way it all goes for everybody, but I can't thank you all enough for helping me with card suggestions and archetypes and all this other kind of stuff to really help drive my cube in the right direction and improve it so, so much. It plays so much better, and I couldn't really have done this without your help, so thank you all so, so much. Now, there will be a link in the description below for all of the other videos in a playlist, so you can have a look at any of the other colors if there's some that you'd like to take a look at, and there'll also be a card on the screen now for you to go and have a look at that playlist. Plus, I'll put a card at the end of the video as well so you can have a look at the playlist too there. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So starting off with the Planeswalkers in green, we've got three here and they all do a slightly different job for us. So to start off with, we've got Nissa Voice of Zendikar and this was the uh, Planeswalker that came out of the Jewel deck. Uh, I really do like the artwork for this and it does look very nice in foil. I uh, have opened up one recently of a normal one as well, but I just prefer the artwork of this. Um, so it's a three loyalty Planeswalker for three, really good for getting yourself a load of tokens out, so protecting yourself with a 0-1 green plant creature token, again you just keep getting tokens more and more and more. Um, minus two, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, so again if you can get loads of tokens out this is going to pump them up really really well. And minus seven, you gain X life, draw X cards with X as the number of lands you control. To be perfectly honest, as much as you could use that, I'm not particularly bothered by that in the slightest for her is literally a case of get a load of tokens out and then pumping them all up uh, with plus one plus one counters. Uh, next up we've got Garrick Primal Hunter. I prefer, I would also prefer to get the other Garrick as well but this one still does a good job. So again you're getting yourself 3-3 three, three beast creature token, so it's 3 loyalty for uh, for 5 which is pretty pretty low to be perfectly honest there. Uh, minus 3 draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control so a nice bit of card draw there and it's not much of a downside or you've got a minus 6 is put a 6-6 six, six green worm creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control and if you can get to that point you're more than likely going to win the game there and to be perfectly honest depending on your strategy just getting yourself loads of uh, creature tokens is the way forward with Garrick there. And then last up we've got from Kaladesh uh, Nissa Vital Force. So 5 loyalty for 5 which is a little bit better. Uh, plus 1 untapped target land you control it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental. Uh, so swinging in with that is actually quite nice plus you've got an untapped land there if you could then tap it again if you really wanted to for something else but having a 5-5 five, five beta is always useful minus 3 return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand so if you need to get anything back it's potentially useful if you've you know had it discarded or got rid of earlier uh, or it's just a big bomb and you need to get it back it's fine um, and then you've got the ultimate is you get an emblem where whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may draw a card that's really really good um, for sure but personally, I would definitely see getting the plus one a few times just so that you're not ultimating her off straight away the following turn because that emblem, as good as it is, um, isn't necessarily going to end up winning you the game. It's going to help quite considerably, but keeping her alive and still having that 5-5 five, five beater every single turn is going to do far more work. So moving on to the one drops now in green and as you can probably tell there are a lot of uh, mana dorks going on here. So Birds of Paradise is obviously the flying one which is really nice. Uh, Land of War Elves, Arbor Elf there, Elvish Mystic, Avacyn's Pilgrim which is a foil. Just about to see that. Uh, Jiraga True Speaker which is quite nice because you can just end up pumping it up later on in the game to do even more for you. Elves of Deep Shadow as well there. Uh, so all of these realistically are just here for a nice bit of mana ramp and that's what green does very very well. So nice variety of them. I think this is not quite the sweet spot but we've got some more in the two drops as well but it does uh, it's done a considerable amount of work there for all of green's mana ramping needs. And then next up we've got cards which are more suitable for not necessarily aggro but being at least being a little bit aggressive here um, with Kessig Prowler there so it's a 2-1 one for 1 which is really nice and green plus you can then pay 5 to transform it into a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, next we've got a Scythe Leopard which is the um, Battle for Zendikar holiday gift box promo card there. Uh, it's very hard to see the foiling but it is actually it does look really nice. Um, 
We've got a 1-1 one, one for 1, and then landfall. Uh, it gets plus 1, plus 1 to the end of the turn whenever a land comes into play. So more often than not, that's going to be swinging as a 2-2 two, two for 1 there. Uh, next, we've got Experiment 1. This is one something I've added in fairly recently. So a 1-1 one, one for 1, but with Involve. Um, it just means whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, there's greater power or toughness than it. You get to counter, and you can remove two to regenerate it as well. But you know that that's going to grow up quite nicely during the game if you can protect it. Uh, Narwhal Dryad is next, so we've got ourselves a one-one for one with Death Touch. Uh, but it gets plus two, plus two as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Uh, like I said. In cube, delirium isn't that difficult to actually achieve. So realistically, the later on in the game, indefinitely, you got yourself a three-three death touch creature there, which is a really nice defensive creature you're swinging in with. Uh, and last of all, we've got Orvimore Tracker. I'm very glad to have opened this up in Modern Masters 2017. One-one for one there, but it's more realistically a combat trick for you. So one and a green, you get to tap it. Target creature you control fights another target creature and it's just a nice piece of removal on a card there and especially you can get some big green creatures to do some attacking. So next up we're moving into the two drops and again we've got ourselves a few uh, mana ramping cards here. All of them do something slightly different. Uh, I'm trying to get all of them in the, in the screen here for you. So Brattleclaw Mystic, again, is one that's going to get you, you know, three colours. A Scorn Villager, uh, you've got yourself a one mana dork there, but it will flip over into a 2-2 two -two and give you something else on top. Uh, Sylvan Cartier is a nice defender with Hexproof, plus it gives you one mana of any colour, which is useful. Deathcap Cultivator is black and green, uh, and it's a 2 on body. And Delirium... It gets Death Touch as well, so it becomes a nice little blocker. Secure Tribe Builder, again, sacrifice it for a basic land, which is useful. Uh, Wall of Roots is a 0-5, but you get to put a minus 0-1 minus counter onto it to get yourself a green mana every turn, which is nice. And Channel Elysia, it's the last one that I've added in for Amon Ket. I mean, the foil looks absolutely stunning. Um, it's a 3-4 for 2. Uh, you can put three minus one minus one counters on a target creature again you could potentially put this onto a nice little one one token or something and you got yourself a three four aggressive creature there for two which is actually pretty decent or you can put them on the channeler itself and you get to tap it to remove a minus one minus one counter from it to add one manner of any colors your mana pool so you got a few options there and i just really do like the foiling on that that is really nice uh next up we've got vine lasher kudzu uh so it's for two it's a one one and whenever a land enters the battlefield and you control you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it so it'll grow as the game goes on which is quite nice uh, not necessarily the strongest card by any stretch of the imagination but it does a good job um next we've got sylvan advocate so it's a two three with vigilance for two and as long as you control six more lands and, a la and land land creatures and this gets plus two plus two so realistically later on in the game uh, with green six lands shouldn't be that difficult to achieve and then you got yourself a four five for two there with vigilance so that's that's really nice to have uh next up we've got scavenging ooze which again will grow very very quickly uh over the course of the game so one of the green is a two two pay one green exile it a card from a graveyard if it was a creature card put a plus one plus one counter on scavenging ooze and you gain a life which is really good, um, plus it's perfect against graveyard style decks as well, so you can just get rid of all the cards that they're trying to reanimate out uh, with this ability, and that's nice, plus you're getting a bit extra life on top. Next we've got Noose Constrictor, so it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Reach, again it's great for against Flyers, plus you get to discard a card and it gets plus 1, plus 1 till the end of turn, and you can keep doing that. Uh, Fame fuels delirium for other bits and pieces, and there are ways definitely in green to get cards back from your graveyard as well. Plus it's a nice way of fueling your graveyard for reanimator too. Next we've got Wall of Blossoms, so it's just a 0-4 defender for 2, and when it enters the battlefield you get to draw a card as well, so pretty solid there. Next up, Duskwatch Recruiter. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, you can then pay 2 and a green to look at the top 3 cards of your library, reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, which is, again is pretty useful. Plus, if there are no spells cast this turn, he flips over into a 3-3 body there in the Kralen Horde Howler. And creature spells you cast cop one less to cast, which again is a pretty useful ability to have. Uh, you know, one less for the big creatures to get into play quicker. Happy with that. Uh, next we've got Mayor of Averbrook. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 2. Other human creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. There are a fair few humans within the cube. Not necessarily tribal related, but you know, even with tokens or anything along those lines, this is just a nice little anthem effect on there. Um, and then he'll flip over into 
a 3-3 three, three where werewolves and wolves you control get plus one plus one and at the beginning of the end step you get to create a 2-2 two, two wolf token on the top as well so uh, pretty solid card there for a couple of different things but self-sufficient to give you some wolf tokens but it's great as a little anthem there and the last one we've got here is den protector so for two it's a 2-1 creatures with power less than den protector's power can't block it uh, it's got mega morph as well and when it's turned face up return target card from your graveyard to your hand so you've always got that available to you um, but if you're able to pump this up you can get in for some significant damage so moving on into the three drops now um, we've got uh, baby Nissa here with Nissa Vastwood Seer it's a 2-2 two, two for three uh, enters the battlefield search your library for a basic forest card reveal it and put it to your hand and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control if you control seven more lands which isn't too difficult in green exile her and turn into the battlefield uh, transforms and protect it into a planeswalker form so it's a three loyalty planeswalker plus one in revealing the top card of your library if it's a land put it onto the battlefield otherwise put it into your hand so a nice bit of card draw there and uh, mana ramping uh, minus two put a legendary 4-4 four, four elemental creature token onto the battlefield so again that's quite nice to have as a nice bit of protection there and the 4-4 four, four body that stays uh, forever and then your minus seven is untap up to six target lands they become six six elemental creatures and still lands and you can just swing in for some significant damage there or you could even ramp into something else if needs be uh, so do like Nissa. next we've got Rishkar Pima Renegade uh, Gade there with from Aether Revolt uh, two two for three enters the battlefield you get to put two plus one plus one counters on up to eight, up to two of target creatures so you know like plus one plus one counters so pumping up some creatures plus each creature control uh, that has a counter on it uh, yeah, they get to tap for mana as well so potentially you can get even more mana ramp if needs be on a, like that extra tokens uh, next we've got Corsa of Crufix so for one and two green you've got a two four play with the top card of your library revealed so it means you just end up having you know an extra potentially it acts like an extra card in your hands uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield you get one life as well so that's a nice benefit to have on top uh, next we've got Silvala Heart of the Wilds and this one's come from Conspiracy 2 so for 1 and 2 green it's a 2-3 whenever a creature enters the battlefield its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other of the creature's power um, that could be pretty nice especially more likely in green where your creature power is going to be a lot higher than all the other creatures on the board well more likely to anyway and you can pay one green and tap it to add X mana in any combination of colours to your mana pool where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So it's a huge amount of mana ramp going on with this with this card for potential there. So I do like that and it's done some really good work for me. Next we've got Tireless Tracker. Uh, so it's a 3-2 three, for 3. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you can investigate. So that's putting a nice clue token onto the battlefield where you can sacrifice it for 2 mana to draw more cards. And whenever you sacrifice a clue you get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So this card could grow quite significantly over the course of the game and you get a lot of card advantage as well out of it. Next up we've got Champion of Lamholt. Um, so you've got a 1-1 one, one for 3 here. Creatures with power less than it can't block it. Uh, block creatures you control so again you can end up pumping this up quite considerably and then you know to get token strategies out of the way because they won't be able to block any of your creatures and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter on it so unless it's dealt with quite early uh, which it probably more likely will be um, it can just snowball and then every one of your creatures can just swing in for free against your opponent because nothing is allowed to block there uh, next up we've got a card from Amonkhet that I've been trying out because I actually quite like its ability even if it is uh, a ridiculous thing um, ridiculous name here with Prowling Serpapard uh, so it's a 4-3 for 3 which isn't too bad to be perfectly honest and it can't be countered which is which is great plus it just means then all creature spells you control can't be countered so you know you'll be able to get no matter what every single one of your creatures is going to be able to come down and that's very useful next up we've got another one of the Amonkhet gods here in the form of Ronus the Indomitable so it's a 5-5 death touch indestructible creature for 3 but it can't attack or block unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater which should be very easy to achieve in green very easy to achieve um, and then for two and a green pay this as many times as you like another target creature gets plus two plus naught and gains trample until the end of turn so you can pump up one of your smaller creatures uh, the following turn 
he comes out to be able to swing in with him as well um, and Trample is always useful on some of the other creatures you've got and then the last two cards we've got here uh, both new additions for a bit of artifact hate there Manglehorn is one from Amonkhet that has been very very good um, so it's a 2-2 two, two for 3 enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, and it, all the artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So that is really nice for a bit of artifact hate. And then Reclamation Sage, we've got the uh, nice promo version of this here. Um, so it's 2-1 for 3, but when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So a little bit more versatility in this one, but they're both great for what they need to do. So moving into the 4 drops now for green, uh, we're going to start off with Obstinate Bailoff. Uh, so it's a 4-4 four, four for 4, enters the battlefield to gain 4 life, that's a nice trigger to abuse, plus if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard it, put it on the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard, so that's always useful, it's got a little bit of protection on itself and 4 life can well be useful over the course of the game. Next up we've got Forgotten Ancient, so it's a 0-3 for 4. Whenever a player casts a spell you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. At the beginning of your upkeep you may move any of the plus 1 plus 1 counters from it to other creatures and that's actually very very useful. Um, just to power up a load of other your creature, other creatures you've got, and you just can potentially snowball, especially the amount of spells that could potentially be cast. It's probably slightly better uh, in a more of a commander format, but it still will grow quite considerably. And being able to move the counters is great. Plus, if you've got uh, Rishgar out, it means you just can be able to give more creatures the ability to tap for mana. Uh, next up, we've got Wolfbriar Elemental. So it's a 4 4 for 4 with a multi kicker of 1 green. Uh, it enters the battlefield, put a 2 2 green wolf creature token for each time it was kicked. Now, to be perfectly honest, uh, you could pay it for 4 if you really wanted to, but I would much rather be paying this for a lot more by using the multi kicker over and over and over again if I'm able to. Um, just to get a lot more value out of this card, so it probably shouldn't really be in the four section. And then, last of all, we've got Caller of the Untamed, another card here from Conspiracy. So it's a two four for four. I've been very impressed with this. Uh, before you shuffle your deck at the start of the game, you reveal this card and exile a creature card you drafted that isn't in your deck. You can then pay X and tap it to put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of a card you exiled with cards named Core of the Untamed. X is that converted mana cost. So again, this is quite useful in the sense that you could have a card that you know isn't even remotely in the colours that you want to be playing in. Uh, having it exiled so you could have Sun Titan sitting on the side or something else along those lines. So again, something that needs to be removed quite quickly, especially if you're getting close to being able to use the ability on that so I do really do like that card. So moving on to the five drops now we we'll start off with Conclave Naturalists so it's a 4-4 four, four for five when it enters the battlefield destroy target artifact or enchantment so a nice piece of removal for those two there. Next up we've got Colonian Hydra and this thing just gets out of control very very easily so uh, it enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it so really it's a 4-4 four, four with trample for five and whenever it attacks double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control so again um, with Rishgar giving counters away, other creatures giving counters away, Nissa being able to spread counters along everything, the, uh, this could really get uh, out of control. But even if you don't have counters everywhere else, you know, doubling this up every single turn can just get massive. Next up, we've got Acidic Slime here. So it's a 2-2-4-5 two, two, with Death Touch. And when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. So it could potentially get rid of your opponent's utility land as well, which is pretty useful. Next up, we've got Virgil's Gear Hulk. So again, this will work quite nicely with Colonial Hydra in the sense that it's a 4-4-5 four, four for five with Trample. But when it enters the battlefield, distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So that is definitely going to be very useful. And spreading the amount of damage that's going to be done plus even if you didn't want to do that even if you wanted to make this as an 8-8 with trample having this and colonial hydra attacking out is just going to make them huge next up we've got a nice cube favorite here in the form of thrag tusk perfect for blinking because you're going to be able to get the enter battlefield trigger of five life and the leaving the battlefield trigger of a 3-3 beast creature token every single time you do it and that makes this a very very solid card and it's a 5-3 body as well for five so i do really like that definitely if you don't have a thrag tusk put, put one in you won't won't regret it 
Next up, we've got Mycoloth. So for f uh, five, it's a four-four with Devour two. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with twice that many plus one plus one counters on it. So again, perfect for killing off a load of tokens. And at the beginning of your upkeep, create a one-one green sapling creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it. Um, so again, if you can get rid of a load of tokens. It gets pumps this up ridiculously quicker. Um, you can then use the likes of Colonial Hydra to double up those counters or anything along those lines, and you just end up getting loads more tokens. And to be perfectly honest, if you did actually want to flicker this, devour a load more creatures, uh, tokens, you know, the sapling creatures you've been putting out to make it even bigger, then that is completely up to you. But there are definitely things worth doing with that. And last of all, is a new card that I've managed to pick up very recently because who doesn't like squirrels in the form of deranged hermit so it's a 1-1 one, one for 5 and it's got echo so when it comes into play you get 4 squirrel tokens uh, these are 1-1s one, but you also then have an anthem on it for all squirrels get plus 1 plus 1 so realistically the turn it comes out um, and it is 8 powers worth of squirrel tokens so perfect little defenders going on there if you'd like to pay the echo cost as well, so you can swing in with the squirrels as that, then you know, be my guest. Or you can have end up getting ways of getting it back from the graveyard to play it out again. So I do really like that. Plus, I mean, who doesn't want squirrels? So moving on into the six plus drops, and there are a fair few here in green for obvious reasons because mana ramp is what this color does. We're going to start off with uh, one of my favorites in the form of Primeval Titan. Six six with Trample for six, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may search your library for up to two land cards. That could be any land cards, by the way, not just basics, uh, and then put them onto the battlefield tapped, which is really nice. So you can be able to ramp up very very quickly. Next we've got Orin Reef Hydra. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five Trampler for 6 and it's got landfall so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control it gets plus 1 plus 1 counter. If it's forest it gets 2 so again this could get quite out of control very very quickly. Uh, next we've got a card here from Aminket which I've actually been quite impressed with in the form of Honor Hydra. Uh, so it's a 6-6 six, six with Trample for 6 and whenever it dies you've then got the Embalm cost of 4 so potentially you could even happily discard this and put it into your graveyard and then you get yourself a 6-6 trampler for four if needs be so that's a nice play for that next we've got uh, Gaia's Revenge uh, I do like the foiling on that as well uh, so it's an 8-5 uh, for seven which potentially is a little bit strong um, you know mana cost wise is a haste creature and can't be countered which is always quite useful and it can't be a target of any non-green spells or abilities from non-green sources so it's got a fair bit of protection on there as well if it had trample it would be absolutely phenomenal but then it'd probably be a little bit broken at the same time but definitely a good beater to come in there next up we've got avenger of Sendikar and you know a really nice target for um, reanimation or anything along those lines just because it's a 5-5 five, five for 7, uh, so you could even play it happily uh, whenever you wanted to. Enters the battlefield, puts a 0-1 green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. If you can ramp up really, really quickly in like a super ramp deck, this will be perfect. Um, and, you know, getting this out. Then, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each plant creature you control. And it just means that, you know, if you can get this out early you may not get that many plant creature tokens but you can buff them up to really high or you can get it later on get a load of tokens um, with the amount of lands you're going to have out there there are ways to get even more lands out plus buffing all of those um, tokens up with Nissa for example will do some significant work for you with him so very nice card to have next up we've got Palaka Worm so it's a 7-7 seven, seven trample at 4-7 and when it enters the battlefield you gain 7 life and when it dies you get to draw a card as well so it's got uses no matter what point of the game or whatever happens to it um, and a 7-7 seven, seven trampler is always a bit of a problem for many people uh, next we've got another card I'm very very happy to have opened in Modern Masters 2017 in the form of Crater Hoof Behemoth and I've been after this card for quite a while and I'm so glad I opened it up that Modern Masters set did so much work for me and my cube so I'm very happy about this and this is just a game ender so it's a 5-5 five, five for 8 with haste when it enters the battlefield creatures you control gain trample and get plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of creatures you control so if you've got yourself a wide board presence this is going to just cause all of your creatures to go absolutely mental they all get trample and you're going to be swinging in for the win there for definite 
Next up, we've got Terastodon. Uh, so again, this is a quite a nice reanimation target here. Um, so it's nine power for uh, eight mana there, sorry. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to three target non-creature permanents. For each permanent put into the graveyard this way, its controller puts a three, three green elephant creature token onto the battlefield. Now, to be perfectly honest, um, destroying some lands that your opponent has or even you know you've got reanimating reanimating it out for example you can then get yourself the nine nine kill off one of your lands if you want to and then you know you get yourself a token and this kill two of your opponent's lands they get put even further behind and it's just going to end up helping you win the game and then the last one we've got here is hooded hydra so for x and two green it enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it and whenever it dies get to put a one one green snake creature token onto the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter on it uh, you've got a morph cost here as well so as it is turned face up put five plus one plus one counters on it um to be perfectly honest more like the situation for this will end up being it'll just come in with loads and loads of plus one counters on it the only other green card that i probably do need to get hold of at some point is woodfall primus because i think that would do some really nice work for me but uh i've actually happy with the way that my green creatures have actually gone there's still a few bits and pieces i need to get hold of fauna shaman would be perfect um, a few other things like that so you know the spells are the ones that need to be improved and you'll be able to see those in a second so moving on into the green spells now, and in the instant section here, we've got crop rotation. So additional cost to cast it, sacrifice to land, search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield, which is fine. Don't have an issue with doing that in the slightest, especially if you need to get hold of a slightly different land that's going to be of more use to you. Plus, in green, there are going to be ways of getting lands back from the graveyard to the battlefield, and something that I will end up being supporting a little bit more than I am at the moment. Next up, we've got Savage Summoning. So, uh, for one cost, it, uh, it can't be countered. The next creature you cast this turn uh, can be cast as though it had flash, plus it can't be countered and it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it as well. So, uh, if you really do need to get that creature out, this is going to be able to help you, but to be perfectly honest, there's probably better spells out there that I could probably utilise rather than that, or better uses for that indeed. Um, next we've got Berserk uh, from Conspiracy 2, this nice reprint and it is fantastic. Uh, cast Berserk only before the combat of your combat step. Um, and then target creature gains trample and plus x plus naught until the end of turn where x is its power at the beginning of the next end step destroy that creature which is fine because if you're going to be able to swing in and deal a significant amount of damage you may end up winning you know putting your opponent down to zero or extremely low from the back of this card and i do like that having that ability next we've got nature's claim so for one cost destroy target artifact or enchantment is control against four life and to be perfectly honest giving your opponent four life to killing off a soul ring or chromatic lantern or anything along those lines uh, i'm more than happy to do that Next up, we've got Benefactor's Draft. So for one and a green, untap all creatures until the end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks, draw a card, and then you get to draw a card as well. So there's a few uses for this here. You could be swinging in, and then you get to untap all of your creatures so that you've got blockers the following turn getting card draw. Um, plus, if you're swinging in, you can then untap them as if it's like a little pseudo-vigilance as well. Um, and then you're going to get loads of cards for any of the creatures that's being your creatures is being blocked by opponent there and the last of all we've got beast within so for three you get to destroy target permanent his controller gets a three three green beast creature token again this could be absolutely anything um so you can kill one of their biggest threats and give them a three three don't have an issue with that killing off uh one of their really useful um artifacts like soul ring or anything along those lines again don't have an issue doing that that's just a very useful card to have so moving on into the sorceries, and there's a fair few here within green. To start off with, we've got Traverse the Elven World. So for one green, you get to search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So again, get yourself a little bit of ramp. Plus, if you've got Delirium, if there are four more card types in amongst your graveyard, um, instead of searching for a library, you can search for a creature as well, uh, and put either of them into your hand. Uh, so again, you've got a little bit more versatility there to go and find something. And again, Delirium is not difficult to achieve. Uh, next up, we've got Irresistible Tr Prey. So for one green, target creature must be blocked this turn if able, and you get to draw a card. So 
if you're going to be swinging in with a big creature and you know you can kill anything that your opponent has, or if they've only got one blocker, for example, this just means that you know, you're going to kill off that blocker and you get a card draw on the top of it. Uh, next, we've got Prey Upon. So target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Again, this is just a nice little piece of removal for green. Uh, next up, we've got Rampant Growth. So for two, you're going to be searching your library for a basic land card, put it onto Battlefield Tap, and then shuffle your library. So again, just a nice bit of mana ramp. Next up, we've got a very old artwork of Channel here. Uh, so until the end of turn, you may add colorless mana to your mana pool at the cost of one life per point, um, and then you can spend it on anything you'd like. So realistically, you can get this out potentially on turn two, um, play this, and you could spend you know, 10 life to get Kozilek out, or... Um, you know, you could even spend 15 if you really wanted to, or 13 for the new Emrakul, or anything along those lines, and just get a massive creature out as soon as possible to help you just end up winning the game that your opponent can't deal with. So I do like Channel there. Next, we've got Explore. So this is useful in the sense that you can play another land on your turn for an additional piece of ramp, plus you get to draw a card as well. Next, we've got Farseek. So you get to search your library for anything but a forest here, so Plains, Island, Swamp, or Mountain. Put it onto the battlefield tap, so again, a little bit more on a ramp. Next up, we've got Gaze Blessing. So for one and a green, target player shuffles up to three target cards from her graveyard into the library. You get to then draw a card, and then when Gaze Blessing is put into your graveyard from your library, shuffle your graveyard into your library. So if you end up discarding this, uh, or someone mills you down, you get to put the entirety of your graveyard back, which is pretty useful. Next up, you've got Regrowth here. So bring any card from your graveyard back to your hand. Again, that could be very useful at times, uh, depending on what ends up going into your graveyard. Uh, Kadama's Reach is next, so for two and a green, search your library for two basic land cards, reveal those, put them onto Battlefield Tapped, then shuffle your library. Uh, got Cultivate as well, which is basically the same thing. Um, next we've got Harmonize, a nice little bit of foiling on there, so it's just drawing three cards for four. Next we've got a new card from Commander, uh, sorry, from Modern Masters 2017. Uh, so five, you get to choose two. Uh, target player gains seven life. Put target non-creature permanent on top of his owner's library. Target player shuffles his or her graveyard into a library, or shuffle your li uh, sorry, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Um, to be perfectly honest, the last one's probably going to be the most useful there. Uh, getting your graveyard back into your library can always be useful as well, especially if you've been discarding a lot of lands or anything along those lines, or just putting uh, a perm target non-creature permanent on top of his owner's library and being able to do some extra damage there could be potentially useful. Next, we've got Overrun. Uh, two and three green creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample to the end of turn we've got a couple of cards similar to this now uh, so we've got Savala Stampede next with Council Dilemma so starting with you each player votes for wild or free uh, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature for each wild vote uh, put those creature cards onto the battlefield and then shuffle the rest to your library you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield for each free vote so this is a nice way of cheating in some extra creatures Next up, we've got Rishkar's Expertise. Uh, again, this was my promo card from Aether Revolt. I do love the foil on that. It does look really nice. Very, again, like I said before in previous videos, I do like the Expertise cards. Uh, I haven't had it in the sense that the floor has been horrible, um, but the ceiling of these cards is ab could actually be absolutely exceptional, and the average play has been very, very good. So for this, you for six mana, you're drawing cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. In green, uh, paying at six mana, you're going to end up having you know, a fair amount of cards being drawn here. Plus, you may cast a card with converting mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. And to be perfectly honest, this actually will include any of the cards you've just drawn as well. So, you know, you're going to get a decent amount of play out of that. And then last of all, you've got Azuri's Predation. This is a card that I've quite enjoyed. It's not necessarily the best thing going on in the cube, and it could probably be swapped out for something for sure. Um, so for each creature your opponents control, you get to put a 4-4 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures. So again, say a token strategy your opponent's doing, you know, you're know, just going to wipe away a hell of a lot of those creatures. Plus, it means you're going to end up having a lot of power on your side of the board. So last of all, moving in into the enchantments, start off with we've got Oath of Nyssa, been a very, very useful card here from Oath of the Gatewatch. Uh, so for one, you've got yourself a legendary enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature, land, or planeswalker from among them. Put them into your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order, so that's a nice bit of card draw. 
Plus, it means you can also spend mana as if it were mana of any colour to cast Planeswalker spells. So that's also very, very useful to be able to splash for other Planeswalkers if need be. Next up, we've got Burgeoning. So for one, you've got enchantment as whenever an opponent plays a land, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield as well. So helps a little bit of mana ramp there. Next, we've got Rancor. So for one, uh, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus naught, and has Trample. And when Rancor is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand. So you can just keep playing it over and over and over again and getting so much value out of that. Next, we've got a card um, to help with plus one, plus one counters. Again, I used to have more of a plus one, plus one counter theme. Uh, so this could probably be swapped out now. And I just completely forgot about it. Uh, so Hardened Scales. If uh, one or more plus one, plus one counters be placed on a creature you control, that many plus one, plus one, plus one counters are placed on it instead so there's still going to be some interaction going on here so with Colony and Hydra, uh, Rishkar and Virgius Gearholt for example will still be able to uh, be a, make benefit of this plus even with Nyssa um, blanketing everybody with plus one plus one counters you're just going to get a little bit more value out of it there. Next up we've got Cryptolith right so for one and a green you've got an enchantment where creatures you control have tap for one mana of any colour so this could be really nice in a token strategy for some significant mana ramp there. Next up we've got Oath of Druids and I've really been enjoying this card since I've got hold of it. So at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player chooses target player who controls more creatures than he or she does. Um, the first player may reveal cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a creature card. If he or she does, that player puts that card onto the battlefield and all other cards reveal this way into his or her graveyard. So again this could be quite useful if you're playing you uh, quite a smaller style deck or you've got yourself a deck that's just got big creatures in the top and all you're trying to do is get hold of Oath of Druids and get some of your big creatures cheated into play quite quickly. Next we've got Bow of Nylea. So attacking creatures you control have Death Touch which can be very useful especially it stops your opponent or the opponent really going to have to think about blocking. Uh, plus you can play one and a green, tap it, choose one, either put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, dealing two damage to target creature with flying or you gain three life or put up to four cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order so there are a few things you can do with this uh, but the death touch is quite handy and the counters style of that is also very good next up we've got abundance so for two and two green if you would draw a card you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order so this is very very useful uh, especially later on in the game where say for example you've already ramped up and got more than enough land so you can always go and find yourself non-land cards or if you need a land desperately uh, this is going to help do that and last of all we've got a card that my partner opened up from one of the core sets of M14 in Primeval Bounty uh, for 5 and a green whenever you cast a creature spell you get to put a 3-3 beast creature token onto the battlefield whenever you cast a non-creature spell put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature you control or whenever a land enters the battlefield and you control you gain 3 lives so it's something that's got a nice little bit of versatility and it gives you a lot of benefits so there we have all the cards that I have in the colour green. Now, I would just like to say a huge thank you again to everybody that has given me suggestions uh, previously because all of those changes that I've made to my colours have made such a difference. I mean, the Gearishal Cube was a bit of an embarrassment, I'm not going to lie. It was literally just me going, I like all of these cards, these are really cool cards, and just threw them together. But now we're actually developing the cube and we're talking you know the art types are starting to form into a nice place mana curves still need to be adjusted a little bit and that'll be something that i do over the coming months especially with new sets coming out hopefully it means there's gonna be new reprints and that kind of stuff as well to really push my cube in the right direction but i can't thank you all enough for everything that you've done in card suggestions and talking to me and giving me some great discussion in the comment section plus outside of youtube as well um for really helping go you know talk about why certain cards are working what's working for you and all of that has been fantastic so thank you all so so much for really helping my cube to get so much better and become a really good playing experience I would just like to take this moment to thank my Patreons of the channel. I can't thank you enough for the help and support that you're giving me. If you'd like to do the same, head over to patreon.com forward slash life begins at 20, and there'll be a link in the description below for that as well, where there are plenty of rewards to choose from. With your support, we can really push to make this channel even better. Be sure to check out our sponsor, 5 for a great range of Magic the Gathering accessories with stunning artwork, plus a great app to draft and create decks on the fly. 
Use the referral code LIFEBEGINS20 for 5% off. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. With your support, we can really help this channel to grow. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.